Hello students, welcome to the lecture on product decisions and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of product, discuss the product classification, define the product mix, explain the product line and explain the concept of product life cycle. Let's start today's lecture with the definition of product decision. We define product decision as every conscious decision made by a company for a product. Important product decisions in international marketing management are Market segment decision The first product decision to be made is the market segment decision because all decisions, product mix decision, product specifications and positioning and communication decisions depend upon the target market. Product mix decision Product mix decision pertains to the type of products and product variants to be offered to the target market. Product specifications This involves specification of the details of each product items in the product mix. This includes factors like styling, shape, size and other attributes and factors like packaging and labeling. Positioning and communications decisions. Positioning is the image projected for the product. Concept of product. Let us talk about the concept of a product. In marketing, a product is anything that can be offered to a market that might satisfy a want or need. In retailing, products are called merchandise. In manufacturing, products are purchased as raw materials and sold as finished goods. The product can be defined as a set of satisfactions and dissatisfactions which a customer receives from experience. The satisfactions may be physiological, economic, social or psychological as follows. Physiological satisfactions, economic satisfactions, good value for money, social satisfactions, psychological satisfactions. The dissatisfactions may or may not be under the control of management. Controllable, uncontrollable. Levels of product. There are three levels of the products which help to define the product in a better manner. These three levels are core product, actual product, augmented product. Supposing you are planning on launching your own car manufacturing unit, what would be your core product? Would it be the car itself? No, the core product would be convenience to your customers. Your customers can also travel by bus or taxi, but they prefer cars because of convenience as well several times because of status symbol. Thus, the core product in case of Tata cars will be convenience and value for money, whereas in case of BMW, it will be status symbol. Thus, the concept of core product is simple. The actual product is the one which is manufactured after a decision which has been taken on what your core product is going to be. Example. If your core product is a status symbol, your actual product will be a very high quality product with high pricing. On the other hand, if the product is a convenience product, the production would be on the basis of value for money. Actual products are quantifiable in nature and have properties like color, branding, quality and so on. The augmented product, as the name suggests, arise by them and are by-products of the core and actual products. These might be complete products within themselves. Again, taking the example, if you are manufacturing a car, it needs regular servicing, warranty and so on. Product classification. I hope you understood what we just discussed. Now we will move further and discuss about the product classification. Products can be classified as tangible or intangible. A tangible product is a physical object that can be perceived by touch, such as a house, automobile, computer, 
pencil. An intangible product is a product that can only be perceived indirectly such as an insurance policy. By use, in its online product catalogue, retailer Sears, Roebuck and Company divides its products into departments, then presents products to potential shoppers according to function or brand. Each product has a Sears item number and a manufacturer's model number. Sears uses the departments and product groupings with the intention of helping customers browse products by function or brand within a traditional department store structure. By association, a product line is a group of products that are closely related either because they function in a similar manner, are sold to the same customer groups, are marketed through the same types of outlets or fall within given price ranges. Product mix. In this section, we will study about the product mix. Product mix is a combination of products manufactured or traded by the same business house to reinforce their presence in the market, increase market share and increase the turnover for more profitability. Product mix is the sum total of all products that a company offers. For example, a pet food manufacturer may offer several varieties of dog and cat food. These multiple products may serve different customers, dog and cat owners, but the products are all parts of the company's product mix. Products within a product mix can either be similar or variegated. There are also four dimensions to product mix – width, length, depth and consistency. Width – The width of product mix includes all the product lines that a company sells. For example, if a vitamin company sells various vitamins, diet products and sports drinks, its product width is 3. Length the length of a company's product mix pertains to the total number of products the company sells. For example, a small consumer products company may have three product lines – snacks, cereal and canned meats. Depth A company's product mix depth pertains to the total number of variations for each product. Product variation can include flavor, fragrance, size and any other salient attribute. Consistency Consistency in product mix refers to the relationship between product lines including use, production and distribution. For example, a small fruit drink manufacturer may use similar production lines for several different types of drinks. Strategy Almost all companies start with limited width length and depth in their product mix. Additionally, a company's product mix will also be highly consistent early on. However, competition or technology may force a company to become more diversified. How to determine an optimal product mix? A company's product mix determines the proportionate amount of each product it offers to its customers. Step 1. Analyze production processes and eliminate any activities that do not add value to the company or are not necessary for product support. Before you can determine an optimal product mix, the process for manufacturing your products must be as efficient as possible. Step 2. Calculate the costs associated with the products after eliminate efficiencies. Step 3. Investigate the possible constraints faced by the product line. Step 4. Calculate the gross revenue generated from the product by multiplying the number of units sold by the price per unit. Step 5. Study the costs and benefits of each product to determine an optimal product mix. Product Mix Pricing Strategies Cost Plus Cost plus pricing is the most basic type of pricing and simply represents setting the cost of a product at some level 
the cost of producing and distributing that product. Competition based. Competition based pricing is pricing that is established specifically to address and respond to the prices of competitors' products. Skimming. Skimming is a pricing strategy used most frequently by new entrants to a market or by companies who have developed new products that have little to no competition. Skimming establishes pricing at a high price point to take advantage of sales that will occur before competitors enter the market, which they ultimately will. Penetration Penetration pricing is a product mix pricing strategy designed to gain market share by introducing a new product or service at a low price point to encourage consumers to try the product. Companies using penetration pricing may even price their products at lower than cost to raise awareness and capture a large share of the market. Product Line After understanding product mix, let's move further to discuss product line. Product line is defined as a group of products that are closely related to each other. They function in the same manner and are sold to the same customer groups. These products are marketed from the same types of outlets and fall within a specified price range. The product line has Line depth refers to the number of product variants in a line. Line consistency refers to how closely relate the products that make up the line. Line vulnerability refers to the percentage of sales or profits that are derived from only a few products in the line. Product Line Decisions Since products are in some way fulfilling the customer's aspirations and needs any change in any one or both of these will lead to changes in the product specifications. This change is what leads to the introduction and withdrawal of products from the market. Hence, product line decisions can be broadly classified under three categories. Product withdrawal, demise, increase in products, item contributions, new product development, NPD. New products emerge in many ways. Sometimes an idea germinates, is developed and a market is sought. In other cases, a new product proposal is developed as a consequence of market analysis. New products and services introductions can be classified according to newness to the market and the extent of customer value created resulting in the following types of new products. Transformational innovation Products that are radically new and the value created is substantial. Examples include CNN news channel, automatic teller machines, ATM and digital cameras. Substantial innovation. Products that are significantly new and that can create important value for customers. Examples include Diet Coke. Incremental innovations. New products that provide improved performance or greater perceived value or lower cost. An example is a new Coca-Cola flavor, cause of new product failure. Many new products with satisfactory potential have failed to make the grade. Here is a brief list of some of the more important causes of new product failures after the products have been carefully screened, developed and marketed. No competitive point of difference, unexpected reactions from competitors, poor positioning, Poor quality of product, non-delivery of promised benefits of product, too little marketing support, poor perceived price quality value, faulty estimates of market potential and other marketing research mistake, faulty estimates of production and marketing costs, improper channels of distribution and marketing costs, rapid change in the market after the product was introduced. Product Development System A typical new product introduction process contains four major steps. Initiate project. The initial step of the NPD process is to properly start and manage the project and its deliverables. 
an initial project plan is developed from a template based on best practices and benchmark data. Resource planning and trade-off studies are performed to identify potential outsource and offshore development opportunities. Develop business plan. Before committing required resources or proceeding with product development, it is critical to validate future product profitability. Using standard business case templates, management must calculate the cost and business benefit of proceeding with the project. Execute project. The major development work, effort and time begins after all the key project criteria are satisfied and the project is approved for execution. Main project parameters such as project plan, milestones and costs are constantly updated as development proceeds. Required resources are managed in order to complete the project on time and within budget. Conduct gate reviews. This step is continuously repeated throughout the NPD process, ensuring that main predefined conditions are achieved before moving on to the next phase of the project. New product adoption. A new product can be defined as a good service or idea that is perceived by some potential customers as new. Research suggests that customers go through five stages in the process of new product adoption or service. These are summarized. Awareness. The customer becomes aware of the new product but lacks information about it. Interest. The customer seeks information about the new product. Evaluation. The customer considers whether trying the new product makes sense. Trial. The customer tries the new product on a limited or small scale to assess the value of the product. Product adoption. The customer decides to make full and or regular use of the new product. Thus, if a customer goes through all the stages, he is assumed to have adopted the product. Concept of product life cycle. In this section, we will study about the product life cycle. The product life cycle applies biological knowledge to products. Life cycle length and incubation period. Sometimes the life cycle concept applies to a brand or category of product. Fad items have a cycle of a few months, but some categories such as the gasoline automobile will be around for at least a century. Introduction stage. You can expect sales to be low while you perform introductory marketing to create awareness. Your primary goal during this stage is not to make a profit. Instead, you want to let customers know what your product does and why it is special. Growth stage. The growth stage is all about increasing sales and gaining consumer loyalty. Increased advertising builds brand preferences. Continuing to roll out new product features, improvements or upgrades keep your customers wanting more. Maturity stage During the maturity stage, you will seek to maintain market share and extend your product's life cycle. Tweaking your product to make it unique helps it stand out from competitors. Decline stage During the decline stage, demand for your product decreases along with both price and profit margin. Now you have three choices. Maintain the product and hope competitors do not harvest the product and continue making profit as long as possible or discontinue the product. Definition of Brand Management The basic definition is the process of maintaining, improving and upholding a brand so that the name is associated with positive results. When something is branded, it is usually defined by a type of sign, term, design, symbol or name. Sometimes all of them can be combined to help identify goods and services one provides to consumers. A good example of brand management has these five things. A clear message, a sense of credibility, 
connects one's target prospects emotionally, motivates the buyer and generates user loyalty. A brand manager's main job is to define their brand. Brand identity. Identity is often mistakenly used interchangeably with logo, but an organization's identity encompasses much more than its logo. Other elements such as the color of a company's mailing envelopes or the music customers hear while on hold on the telephone are elements of the identity. Brand Valuation Marketing specialists need information for brand management decisions. Using brand valuation information, managers can assess the effect of brand expenditures on attributes of brand equity rather than simply monitoring changes in market share. The brand's value as a measure of success can help estimate the effect of management decisions such as those generating short-term expenditures and long-term benefits. Brand valuation allows managers to appraise the efficacy of brand expenditures in terms of the enhanced or diminished value of the brand itself. Caution. Be very cautious while designing a logo. Business logo should be designed carefully keeping in mind the key features of a business. A badly designed logo can harm your business image completely. Brand loyalty. Brands that are loved by these customers benefit from a rare, durable form of brand loyalty that is shared with future generations and among trusted members of a tightly knit community. Brands that are successful in establishing an authentic connection have the unique opportunity to experience a remarkable level of brand loyalty, one that can span generations and communities. Marketers who invest the time to know and understand the woman and her lifestyle will win a lifetime of loyalty. In order to be successful in the market, brands should deliver the following. Pragmatism. Explicitly address and provide a solution to a functional need, even establishing the product as multi-purpose and easy to share with reusable packaging attributes. Pride. Evoke ideals of holistic beauty and pride and at the same time reinforce sensitivity to regional nuances of ethnicities and religions. The end benefits of a product and its instructions should be visually conveyed, clear and pictorial. Accessibility. High frequency markets or kiosks are key points of distribution but do not provide the opportunity for women to interact with products. Beyond traditional marketplaces, brands must also utilize the trusted platform of a tightly knit community and be ready to activate within soft economies and systems of trade, communicating with her where she spends her time. Empowerment. Educate her about her body and her health, empowering her with knowledge and establishing the brand as a trusted resource. Sustain a two-way dialogue offering solutions to enable positive change for herself and her family. Summary Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Product management is a function within a company that deals with the planning or marketing or forecasting of a product or products through at all stages of the product life cycle. A company's product mix determines the proportionate amount of each product it offers to its customers. The growth stage is all about increasing sales and gaining consumer loyalty. An innovator is a small percentage of the market that is at the forefront of adopting new products. The product mix is a collection of products and services that a company chooses to offer its market.